Good afternoon. My name is Richard Broom and I'm the President of the Royal Historical Society of Victoria. I would firstly like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which we are all meeting today across Victoria. They are traditional custodians of our, our places of living and that is extremely important. I would not like to acknowledge them, elders past and present and those elders emerging. I'd also like to acknowledge all the people here today who are dignitaries of the Royal Historical Society of Victoria, of the Public Record Office, um, and, and all of you welcome. I'd also like to acknowledge the Victorian Government, which has again funded these awards. I'm extremely excited about these awards because I have been uh, a previous winner in uh, quite a long time ago and I know as an author just how important these awards are. The Victorian Community History Awards began in 1998 and they have been running annually since that time. Since 2011 the Royal Historical Society of Victoria and the Public Records Office of Victoria have partnered to host these very important awards. We often meet at the Arts Centre, but of course, again, because of COVID conditions, as of last year, we are on Zoom. So I hope this will be uh, some solace to the prize winners and all the creators that we are able to present it this way, at least. Since its inception, the Victorian Community History Awards have increased the standards of community history in the state and also magnified the diversity of what is produced in these uh, awards by creators. This year there's been 151 entries which is quite amazing given the difficulty of people moving around the state and accessing records uh, and all the other things they need to create um, their works. We have issued a short list of 38 titles preceding the awards today and uh, we're very pleased with the high quality of these. There's nine category prizes being offered today, as well as the special Premier's Prize and also a judge's special prize. I'd like to thank all the staff and volunteers that bring the awards to you today. First of all, to the RHSV Project Officer, Emily Amaiolo, who has received all the entries, 151 of them, and has processed them, liaised with entrants, and then also siphoned those onto the, the judges and their panels. I'd like to thank Tara Oldfield, too, of the Public Record Office, who has been over a number of years guiding these awards in the most excellent manner and making sure that the awards are kept relevant and uh, modified over the years where necessary. We have about 20 export, expert judges involved in uh, adjudicating on all the entries this year and they have been ably led by Associate Professor Adrian Jones who's the chair of the panel. I'd also like to thank Professor Alastair Thompson of Monash who is president of the uh, Oral History Association of Victoria and this body has partnered with the awards over this and several uh, years in recent times. I'd like to thank again all the creators of the 151 entries and in fact we will have many many more than 151 creators because some of these entries have a great number of people behind them uh, producing the wonderful and creative works that they do. I'd also like to thank those unsung heroes, the families of all these creators, because without family assistance, taking the load at times, creators could not produce what they do. Now today I have uh, the pleasure of announcing that Judy Madigan will present the awards this year. In fact, Judy has presented these awards in recent years and we thank her very much for this. Judy Madigan was the member for Essendon, uh, 1996 to 2010. She was the Speaker of the Legislative Assembly from 2003 to 5, and since 2010 has been very, very actively involved in community organisations, particularly those concerned with the environment, with women's issues and with heritage issues. 
So uh, Judy will be presenting all the prizes except the Premier's Prize will be presented today by a special guest. But first, it's my great pleasure to introduce our first speaker, the Honourable Danny Pearson. Danny Pearson has a, a BA Honours degree and an MBA degree and was advisor uh, to the Brax government and a researcher for um, government ministers in that uh, government. Since 2014, he has been the member for Essendon. He is also, besides being the minister, for Government Services. He is the Minister for Creative Industries and the Assistant Treasurer. I learned on social media today that in fact, like all of us, he is in need of a haircut. But uh, despite that, we are all presenting as best we can. And uh, so it's my great, great pleasure to hand over to the Honourable Danny Pearson. Thank you. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which I'm filming today. I pay my respects to their elders past and present and to elders of other communities who may be joining us for this video. Thank you, Richard Broom, for your very warm welcome. I am so pleased to be a part of these Victorian Community History Awards once again. And although I look forward to seeing you all in person next year, it's fantastic that we can come together online to celebrate the local history projects of the past 12 months. I know firsthand the valuable work historical societies, historians and passionate volunteers do to preserve and share the history of our communities. At such a significant period in our history, never has this been more important. Many projects undertaken by historians share important lessons of the past relevant to us today, such as those shortlisted histories about influenza, nursing and HIV AIDS. Other projects capture the present day for future generations, such as the shortlisted project entitled COVID Kids Oral History. Our hosts have also been reflecting on and capturing stories of the past year, including the Public Record Office Victoria's New Normal exhibition and the Royal Historical Society's Stay at Home Festival. It's fantastic to see such varied ways in which these histories are presented. Whether these be publications or documentaries contributing to our understanding of our state's diverse history, or unique presentations such as virtual reality games and musical theatre presentations that bring stories of the past to those who may not ordinarily go looking for it. I want to thank every single person who has had a role in the projects entered and shortlisted for an award today. I also want to acknowledge the Public Record Office Victoria and the uh, Royal Historical Society of Victoria for the work they do to celebrate history each year and for adapting the program again so that we can promote the outstanding work produced in 2021. I'll now hand over for the announcement of the award winners and congratulations to all. Thank you, Minister, and it's a pleasure to be with you all today. Unfortunately, not all together having scones, jam and cream, but hopefully next year we'll be back to that. And seeing we've now missed two years of it, we should get a really good afternoon tea next year. So we'll go to the serious stuff, the first award, and we thank first the Victorian Government for supporting these awards through the Community Support Fund. The first one is the Collaborative Community History Award and the shortlisted applicants for collaborative works that involve significant contributions from several individuals or groups. The Wadawurrung Aboriginal Corporation and the National War Museum for Wadawurrung Country, Graham Willett, Angela Bailey, Timothy W. Jones and Sarah Rood, and the Australian Queer Archives for a history of LGBTIQ+, Victoria in 100 Places and Objects, and Her Place Women's Museum Australia, with Dr. Madonna Graham, Professor Odette Best and Penelope Lee for Unmasked, celebrating nurses in midwifery, Victoria and beyond. And I think it's a very good time to be celebrating nurses, how hard they're working at the moment. Now for each winner today, I'll read the short judges report. If you want to see the full citation, head to the Public Record Office of Victoria or the Royal Historical Society of Victoria websites after today's presentation and download the winner's booklet. And so the winner of the first award is A History of LGBTIQ+, Victoria in 100 Places and Objects. The judge had said about this work, 
This beautiful and insightful community collaboration explores cultural heritage by enabling sensitive storytelling. Objects and places of social significance are documented to renate personal histories and to share collective experiences. Community memories and knowledge make a sometimes hidden history visible, tangible, compelling and politically forceful. Next we have the Local History Project Award and that recognises activities that enhance awareness of records of significance to local communities. The shortlisted applicants are the Chinese Australian Family Historians of Victoria for the Victorian CEDT Index and the CED Index is the Certificate of Exemption for Dictation Test which means that if you'd come here as a Chinese and you went away again you didn't have to sit for an English or other language test when you returned and the Geelong Regional Library Corporation and Geelong Heritage Centre for the Geelong Honours Them project. From this shortlist, the award-winning project is the Victorian CDT Index. And the judges said, this outstanding project digitises and trans transcribes records, complemented by adept search function, and adds value by linking the data to stories from historians, artists and community members, providing an exciting new approach to digitisation projects. People of Chinese Australian backgrounds can be placed in their local histories now that their records are accessible. The History Publication Award, and that recognised publications or e-books on Victorian history. The shortlist is Vicky Shuttleworth and the National Trust of Australia for Labasa, the Ho House of Dreams. David F. Radcliffe for Changing Fortunes, Ebb and Flow of People and Place in a Pocket of Port Melbourne. Michael McCarthy for In the Shadow of the Prom. Richard Turner for Made in Lancashire, a collective biography of assisted migrants from Lancashire to Victoria, 1852 to 1853. Ian Burke for Jazz A. Munro and Company, the largest garage in Melbourne. And Carolyn Collins for Save Our Sons, Women, Descent and Conscription during the Vietnam War. From the shortlist, the winner of the 2021 History Publications Award is Michael McCarthy for In the Shadow of the Prom. The judges said, this book, the result of more than 30 years of research, represents community history at its best. The work minutely details the role of tramways in linking small local communities in South Gippsland to the wider world. Mike McCarthy's Labour of Love combines history with studies of photography, geography and technology to reveal the heart and soul of his beloved South Gippsland. Next we have the Local History Small Publication Award. This award recognises small publications or e-books which feature Victorian local, cultural or social history. The shortlisted applicants are Andrew Kelly with illustrators Heather Potter and Mark Jackson for Little Lon. Sarah Pinto for Places of Reconciliation, Commemorating Indigenous History in the Heart of Melbourne. Stephen Cook for 100 Years in the Making, Box Hill RSL 1920 to 2020. And Maggie Stowers for Dwellers of Fisherman's Flat. The winner of the 2021 Local History Small Publications Award is Sarah Pinto for Places of Reconciliation, Commemorating Indigenous History in the heart of Melbourne. The judges said, this thoughtful study makes an important contribution to the wider public debate about recognising Aboriginal history in the urban context of the 21st century. Focusing on central Melbourne, Sarah Pinto examines the development since the 1990s of public monuments and memorials, historical place markers, walking trails and commemorative naming. In many cases, these markers address, albeit symbolically, the unfathomable loss and suffering of Aboriginal people. Sarah Pintos knows she is part of an active and ongoing conversation. There is much work still to be done and this is an important contribution. The next award is the Digital Storytelling Award, which recognises digital, digital presentations of history. The shortlisted applicants are Emily Ramsey and Andy Yong from the True Crimes Games for Eastern Market Murder, Fred Cahir, Lucinda Horrocks and Jerry Nemo with Federation University, Wind and Sky Productions, the Australian Red Cross Society and Ballarat RSL for Ordinary People in Extraordinary Circumstances, The Missing, Atalante Dionysus of Atlanta Films for A Miscarriage of Justice, way back when consulting historians Russell Goldsmith and City of Port Phillip for Through Childhood Eyes, 
Hidden Stories of World War II, and Ian McIntyre, Kirsten Lindsay, and Tatian Ahern for Beats, Ballads, and Ballrooms, Darabin Live Music Venues, 1955 to 2020. The Digital Storytelling Award goes to Atalanti Dionysus for A Miscarriage of Justice. The judges said, this is an intimate, immersive and site-specific project exploring the stories of the last woman and man executed in Australia at Pentridge in the 1950s and 60s. This outstanding project blends augmented and virtual reality technologies with historical interpretation and dramatisation. Powerful personal and emotional a miscarriage of justice transports audiences back in time. The outcome is a rich media experience of broad appeal to audiences, whether online or on site. And I have to say, just as a personal thing, if I ever had a trivial pursuit, I do extremely well because Ronald Ryan was hanged on my birthday. So I always know exactly the date. <laughs> now for the Community Diversity Award. The Community Diversity Award category recognises projects that reflect diversity and inclusion and tell the history of cultural diversity in Victoria. The short list includes Roy Hay for Albert Pompey Austin, A Man Between Two Worlds, Uncle Roy Henry Patterson and Jennifer Jones for On Tongarung Land, Sharing History and Culture, Noah Reisman and Transgender Victoria for Victoria's Transgender History, and authors Claire Land, Paola Bala, Kate Golding, Designer Letterbox, and the City of Melbourne for Black Cookbook, New Cultural Perspectives on Cook's Cottage, a set of provocations. And the winner is The Tungarung Land, Sharing History and Culture by Uncle Roy Henry Patterson and Jennifer Jones. The judges said, born of Uncle Roy Patterson's desire to make his knowledge of traditional culture more widely known, this book relates both the history and traditional culture of the people. It connects oral history and documentary sources to traditional knowledge, systems and contemporary ecology and pharmacology. It compares an Indigenous perspective on the management of environment, caring for country, with the depletion of natural resources and ecological damage caused by Western agricultural practices. The approach adopted in this fine book models how local histories can be written as cross-community partnerships. Now for the History Interpretation Award. The History Interpretation Award recognises projects that best use a unique format of historical representation. The shortlisted applicants are Commonplace Productions, Bill Garner and Sue Gore, with Casey Sinclair, Alice Garner, Pat Furs and Band Friends of Wendy Cotton, for Finding Fanny Finch, the National War Museum and the City of Greater Geelong, for On the Land, Our Story Retold, and the Museum of Chinese Australian History, for Stories of Chinese Anzac and Chinese Australian World War II Soldiers. And the winner of the 2021 Historical Interpretation Award is Finding Fanny Finch. The judges said, The snappy and innovative script for this play uses theatre to interpret and share a singular history story. The judges were impressed by the play's ways of imagining and building an immersive world for audiences by embedding the research and by placing the historians on stage instead of behind the scenes. There is sufficient context for a general audience, but also enough nuance and depth to fuel a history's buff desire for thoughtful detail. The play deserves to be widely performed. Next is the History Article Award. The History Article Award recognises journal articles that feature Victorian history. The shortlisted applicants are Ian D. Clark, Rolf Schellengloff, Fred David Cohere and Gabriel McGuinness. For Karaburra, the Boonwurrung Wirri Rap and Bard, 1797 to 1849, a man of high degree. Barbara Minchinton for the rise and fall of Lady Gillett in Melbourne's turn of the century society. Fiona Gatt for family history and the long view of the Great War. Eric Eklund for the dreaded eunomic influenza has made its appearance among us. The influenza pandemic of 1919 in Gippsland, Victoria. And Philip Gobe for the architecture of manufacturing design for making in post-war Victoria. Congratulations to all for being shortlisted. And the winner of the 2021 Historical Article Award is Barbara Minchinton for the rise and fall of Lady Gillett in Melbourne's turn of the century society. The judges said... 
This article demonstrates detailed archival research and depth of knowledge of not only Lady Gillett, but also of her era of evangelical moralism. By focusing on gender and class, Barbara Minchinton challenges assumptions about the role and agency of wives of prominent men, in this case showing Lady Gillette's public and private lives and choices she made in the wake of a scandal enveloping her husband. Minchinton's examination of Lady Gillett's engagement with the arts helps us understand her intellectually as well as showing the social relationships sustaining her. This is a compelling study of public and private lives. The next award is presented in collaboration with Oral History Victoria and so I'd now like to introduce Alistair Thompson, Vice President of Oral History Victoria, who will announce this award. Thank you, Judy. I'm on Wurundjeri land in the northern suburbs in a park surrounded by butcher birds and magpies and I want to acknowledge the original custodians of this beautiful place and pay respects to elders past, present and emerging. I also want to acknowledge my fellow judges for the Oral History Award, Alicia Soretto and Jessica Ferrari, and thank them for their hard work. Well, I have to admit, it was a lot of fun judging this award. I'm really pleased to be back again this year presenting the Oral History Award. Oral History Victoria nurtures a vibrant community of oral historians, and we provide opportunities to learn and celebrate the dynamic practice of oral history. As such, we're thrilled to partner with Public Record Office Victoria and the Royal Historical Society of Victoria on this award to celebrate the excellent work that's been achieved in oral history in 2020 and 2021. This oral history category recognises both print and non-print presentations that preserve first-hand accounts of individuals with unique life experiences and memories. So it's my pleasure to now announce this year's wonderful shortlist. Way back when consulting historians for their COVID Kids Oral History Project. Linda Mitchelson Twig, representing the Gippsland Lakes commercial fishing community, assisted by Nikki Henningham, Lee Henningham, Tanya King, Donna Squire, and Jeff Stanton for End of an Era, the last Gippsland Lakes fisherman. Robert Reynolds, Sherlene Robinson, and Paul Senjuk for In the Eye of the Storm volunteers and Australia's response to the HIV AIDS crisis. And Melbourne's Jewish Holocaust Centre for understanding through testimony. All four terrific projects, all of which you can find featured on the Oral History Victoria website. And from this shortlist, I'm excited to announce that the winner of the 2021 Oral History Award is End of an Era, The Last Gippsland Lakes Fisherman. And let me read from the judge's citation for this award. In April 2020, the long history of commercial fishing in the Gippsland Lakes ended by government decree. End of an Era is a community-based oral history and photography project that combines the expertise of members of the fishing community alongside academic researchers and professional historians and photographers. The interviews and the images capture the life histories of the men and women of the Gippsland Lakes fishing industry and its profound significance for each narrator and for their community. The interview collection is archived at the National Library of Australia where it will be available for future research. The project team curated a travelling exhibition which has been enjoyed in Lakes Entrance, Geelong and Melbourne Docklands and which comes to Painesville in the coming months. A beautifully produced website represents the exhibition and visitor responses and showcases the photographs alongside 12 of the interviews. Each narrator brings the world of commercial fishing to life, from the intricacy of meshing and seining, to the habits of different sea creatures, to the sounds, smells and sights of an environment that they love and know so well. Congratulations to all involved. Thank you very much, Alistair. Now, there are only a few more awards left, so we'll get on to the next one. And there are two recipients of the Judge's Special Prize. The first Judge's Special Prize goes to Paul Paffin for, for The Fallen, the 1921-1922 Melbourne Public Library mural competition within the setting of decorating painting in Australian art. The Judge has said, Paul Paffin's meticulously researched and superbly illustrated history traces the inception and conception of a memorial mural in the State Library in 1921-1922. Paffin unravels the ins and outs of the resulting competition. 
by tracing the ideas and hopes of Victorians on how best to commemorate the trauma of the recent war to end all wars. Paul Paffin tells us a great deal about our former selves. His study models the community, social and intellectual history of art, not just as performed by artists, but also as prompted and apprehended by labor patrons and the public. The second judge's special prize goes to Richard Brolowski for Under the Rainbow, The Life and Times of E.W. Cole. The judges said, under the Rainbow tells the story of Edward W. Cole, the proprietor of the Coles Book Arcade, operating in Melbourne for 57 years from 1874. It's a fascinating story, engagingly told, about a man born into an impoverished English family who emigrates to Australia and makes good through hard work and self-determination. The book is a wonderfully readable social history of life and society in 19th and early 20th century Australia. Richard Brolowski has produced the pot of gold at the end of Cole's trademark rainbow. So finally, with one more award to go, I'd like to say congratulations to everyone who entered the, the um, competition this year, especially as I saw with lockdown, it's been hard to access resources and I think you should all be exceptionally proud of yourself that you've managed to do so well. So congratulations. From all of us at the Public Records Advisory Council and the Public Records Office of Victoria and the Royal Historical Society of Victoria. And now for our last award, the Victorian Premier's History Award, I'd like to introduce our special guest, Catherine Andrews, to announce this year's winner. Catherine has a great understanding of the value of community history, having worked previously for the Public Record Office of Victoria and being an ambassador for the Royal Historical Society. She has presented awards in previous years, including the inaugural Victoria Premier's History Award. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which I'm filming. I pay my deep respect to their elders, past and present, and the Aboriginal elders of other communities who may be joining us remotely today. Thank you to Judy Madigan, President of the Public Records Advisory Council, and Alastair Thompson of Oral History Victoria for announcing today's category award winners. When I presented this award last year, I asked you to consider what we might tell our children and grandchildren about this time that we're living through right now. How surreal it is to know that we're experiencing something important and how historians like us might examine the things we've all gone through. Which stats and figures will they dig up? And with the clarity of hindsight, what they might eventually learn from our experience. But as we gather today, 19 months into this pandemic, what's been reinforced to me is the importance of stories and their power to reveal a humanity that facts and figures often hide. The stories of workers, nurses, teachers, and everyday people who've led their communities and through their own individual sacrifices, defended them too. Like many of the entries this year, the pandemic is a story of people. And it's a history that we will continue to learn from for generations to come. The Victorian Premier's History Award goes to what the judges have deemed to be the most outstanding community history project submitted in any category, displaying originality, excellence and scholarship. And I am thrilled that this year's winning submission goes to an important film and a story that, if not uncovered, might never have been told. The winning entry for the 2021 Victorian Premier's History Award is Ablaze, written and directed by Alec Morgan and Tariki Onus, and produced by Tom Zubricki. This really is an incredible documentary. It's a film that must be seen. Thank you, Alec, Tariki and Tom for gifting us your work. It's a story of the life and work of William Bill Onus, a Yorta Yorta Wiradjuri man and an Aboriginal rights activist in Victoria. Bill was a remarkable figure for his time, determined and ambitious, charming and charismatic. He was an entrepreneur and an unstoppable advocate in the pursuit of justice and self-determination for his people. His is a story that must be heard and shared. It's about the history of our state and a man who through his own might gave a voice to those without one. This is history at its best. It's a truth that we must reconcile and learn from. And I'm so glad to invite the Ablaze team to accept this award. Thank you so much and congratulations.
Hello, I'm Tirith Jonas, and I'm the co-writer and co-director of Ablaze, alongside my wonderful colleague, Alec Morgan. We're so very honoured to receive the Victorian Premier's History Award for 2021. A big thank you to the Royal Historical Society of Victoria and to the Public Records Office for these awards. And indeed, to the judges for recognising our documentary about my grandfather, Bill Onis. His story of the struggle for Indigenous rights from the 40s through the late 60s is truly a Melbourne story and it belongs to us all. It was a long and often difficult journey to get a blaze made and out in the world. And we'd like to humbly give thanks and acknowledge those whose passionate support got us there, particularly the owners and elders of the Bunwurrung, Wurundjeri, Yorta Yorta, Ngunawal, Gariyara, Ngarla, Nyamal and Darug peoples, upon whose land we've lived and worked throughout this extraordinary journey. We would also like to thank those who gave their time to put their memories of Bill on record. And to thank our dedicated creative team, especially our tireless producer, Tom Zubricki, editor, Tony Stevens, composer, Jen Anderson, Murray Vanderveer, Tom Murray, and Sue Maslin. And to all those that we don't have time to name, you know who you are. And a very special thanks to Macquarie University who backed the research and development, the University of Melbourne, the State Library of Victoria, Film Victoria, the Melbourne Film Festival, Screen Australia, and the National Film and Sound Archive. We are deeply grateful for this important award and for giving recognition to the historical contribution of elder and leader, Bill Onis. Thank you. Thank you. All right, it's my pleasure to reintroduce Richard Broom again to speak to you. And can I say farewell to you all? And Lily and I look forward to seeing you again next year. Well, what a wonderful day it's been. I hope all of you are pleased. For those who unfortunately didn't win today, it's just an amazing thing that you were here, that you created something that will be of lasting value to this state and which will be so valuable to readers, researchers, local communities into the future because what you create helps to create Victoria in the sense that we, we make the present out of the past that you are delving into and creating. To those who actually won a prize, congratulations again. It's, it's a great achievement and again, something that you'll be able to cherish into the future. So I, I thank everybody who participated in today and everyone behind the scenes who have made the Victorian Community History Awards for 2021 what they are. And I look forward to meeting you all again and hopefully next year in person at the Arts Centre when we will again celebrate what the creators of Victoria have done to enrich our lives. So thank you very much.